Hey guys, we're going to be doing part three of our STMR discussion um, about the permanent five-star unit STMRs. Um, I'll probably do one for NeoVisions as well, and maybe even one for limited time five-star units, just, you know, for fun. Um, that'll probably be later in the week, though. This will be it for this weekend. Um, so before we resume where we left off, um, it was pointed out that I accidentally jumped over Awakened Rain in his STMR. I mentioned him very briefly during the Garland review last video. Um, just to give Rain his, pop, his proper due, we will talk about his STMR in detail now. So Awakened Rain's STMR is an accessory with 30 to all stats, flat stats, and 30% to all resistance. Overall, it is pretty much a better version of Garland's STMR for everyone except for pure mages. Um, you know, more defense, more spirit, or more attack power for everyone that matters. Uh, especially for tanks, I usually use Awakened Reign's STMR pretty often on my either physical or magical tank that needs more resistances. You know, 30 to all in the accessory slot is pretty good unless you need like a specific single resist at a really high value or maybe two resistances at a really high value then maybe I'll go for something like you know Ashes Ring for Holy or Cursed Doll for Ice something like that or you know Barbarish's STMR for Wind but when you need like a widespread of resistances on your tank or anyone really Awakened Rain is just a really good multi-purpose resistance STMR in the accessory slot. Now back to where we left off um, we actually don't have very many to go for the permanent five-star units, so this won't take too much longer. This will be the previous videos were like over an hour long. This one's probably going to be a lot shorter. We'll see though. Um, so Rufus Shinra's STMR is next. Um, truth be told, I don't even really know what it is. I know it's like dual wield with a gun or something. Let's go take a look at it real quick. So 50% true dual wield and 60% attack while using a gun. Yeah, this is the reason I didn't really know much about it. I actually do have this. Never ever used it. Now I know why. Um, you know, we don't dual wield. Uh, gun users don't really need more attack power. And yeah, that is pretty much it. So overall, Rufus's STMR, not very good. This is temporary or a limited unit. Uh, Lively Steward Shinju's STMR is one of the really, really good ones. Um, I've been saying that a lot recently. I'm realizing like the last like 15 units for the most part have all been like, oh, those are great STMRs. Well, the truth is towards the end of the seven star era, um, you know, they were actually running out of seven stars. Most of the STMRs were pretty good because that was how they, they sold units. They knew, you know, we didn't really need unit power anymore. We just needed better gear. And but they started making good STMRs. Um, but anyway, this is an accessory, 55 attack power, 20% MP and 50% attack power. Uh, this is not double hand or anything, this is percent attack. So overall, very, very good. Um, I realize I've been saying overall quite a bit. I gotta try to mix up my vocabulary. But anyway, um, yeah, this is just a decent STMR for attack power. So when you need just more attack power and you know, you're know you good on killers, you're good on double hand or true dual wield or whatever you're using, and just need more raw attack, this is a good source. Um, there are better options for like specific weapon types, like for example, Sabin's STMR I mentioned a while back, um, had, is Sabin's 50 or is it only 30? I don't remember. I could, it could be, I could be mistaken, but I do use steward pumps very often on attack power builds that just need a little bit extra attack power. So, um, good source of it for the accessory slot. Uh, Itachi's STMR. Um, for the arena is great. I use her in the arena a lot these days. Uh, but the, the STMR on its own is 80% attack power, which is pretty nice, um, just like Last Guardian. So I actually overlooked this quite often. I didn't even realize it had 80% attack power unrestricted. Apparently it does. Um, you could use this instead of Last Guardian or along with Last Guardian if you happen to need 160% attack power from two material slots. That seems a little bit excessive. Um, it does give dual wield. If dual wield was relevant, this would be pretty, pretty good. Um, I guess part of the reason that I don't really think of this too often is because I personally have Kingdom Hearts Riku, and his STMR just like is the, the cream of the crop for these like attack power and double hand or true dual wield STMRs. Riku's does it all better. But um, this is like a baby version, and it's still pretty good. 80% attack power is very, very high. Only 50 true dual wield. 
um, which you know might be enough. But if you want 100 percent or more, there's better ways to or better consolidated ways to get it. And then decrease MP for ninjutsu. This is basically just Itachi's skills. I think some of Yoshikiri's skills qualify as well, but there's very, very few skills in the game that are classified as ninjutsu. So you may as well just realistically think of this as 30% mana reduction just for Itachi. Or just ignore that entirely. But overall, a decent set again. An okay-ish STMR. Ray of Hope Larsa is a dagger with um, again it enables true dual it enables dual wield which is good for support units um it's got good defense and okay-ish spirit and 20 percent hp i honestly do find myself valuing spirit more often on support units over defense for the most part that's more helpful you know it makes their heals bigger it makes their um mana refill bigger for some skills not all it depends if it's a scaling mp regen or a flat mp regen um, and then, like, for example, uh, Rem's STMR uh, gives fill rate. This one does not. I like fill rate on support units. So I don't really use this one almost ever over Rem's STMR. Uh, it's technically good on Gabranth if you're using him as a tank still. Unfortunately, I feel like Gabranth has been a little bit power crept by the upgraded Behemi and the new Mave. So other than, like, a budget video, I don't really use Gabranth anymore. But it's good for him. Um, you know, it's not, not this is not a bad STMR or anything. It's just like on support units, I prefer Mave. I'm not Mave. I prefer Rem's STMR on um, on actual tanks. I've got better weapons. I'm not using Gabranth anymore, so not great. Uh, Thoughtful System Sister Marie. I think this is similar to Arden, if I remember correctly. I have this. I almost never use it. Oh, it's actually pretty decent. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. I have this. I just don't really use it. So status immunity, 200% fill rate, and 40 defensive spirit. So this is this is actually pretty good, it seems like. Um, reasons I don't use it, well, for mages, again, Creel's STMR feels more slot efficient. For, you know, I frequently do build my support units with multiple copies of Mood Maker. That's Prompto's TMR. That gives 200% fill rate. This is actually way better than Prompto's TMR. So if, if I can keep this in my mind to remember that this actually exists, then I can start using this more. Because actually, a lot of times, I ended up gearing like a support unit for status immunity in a different slot. And then I'll put Prompto's TMR, which gives 200% fill rate and some HP, and that's it. This is better. So the, the, this, this is the same problem I, I had with uh, Lily Set's STMR. It's like I own a very superior option to what I always use, but because I always go to a specific item out of habit, I just overlook it. So yeah, I'm, I, I myself am learning during this video. So I need to keep in mind when I'm gearing a support unit and I'm loading up four copies of Prompto's TMR for Mood Maker, swap one of the Mood Makers with the ter determined to defeat the Empire. That being said, I'll probably forget again, but I'll try to remember in the future that my support units should be using this when I'm trying to gear for absolute fill rate. Because 200% fill rate is awesome. And this gives status immunity on top of that. This is actually a really good TMR that I just I just forget about. I, I forget, forget, forget it exists. Um, Relentless Might Elvis. This is a great sword. It's fire. This is basically... Uh, it's either an upgrade or a downgrade to Crimson's STMR. Crimson's STMR is higher flat attack, also a great sword fire element two-hander. This one gives 30 LB damage. Crimson's STMR has um, higher flat attack. So it's really a wash if you need more LB damage or not. If you do, this is better. If you don't, Crimson's is better. Um, the reality is you're probably going to use neither one, and you're going to use just a better great sword, period. Because uh, neither one of these are that special. They are fire element, but again, like I've mentioned, getting a imbue on your party is super easy. And, like, I just don't really gear for elemental weapons these days. Unless I'm going for, like, some flashy speed clear that literally doesn't, doesn't want to waste a single turn on imbuing. Then I'll use elemental weapons. But that's more for show-off than actual, you know, viable strategy reasons. Um, Lexa's STMR is similar to Kuja's. It's just a uh, wind version. So it's an auto amp for wind. That's really the only reason you would ever use this. Um, you would put this in the base form. It auto amplifies your wind damage. Uh, pretty much it. And it would, it would persist while you brave shift. 
um, and it'll stay there forever, undispellable. As a standalone rod, it's uh, 170 magic, too low to be, be relevant, so you're never going to use this on your primary form. Um, it's unfortunate, you know, it should have fire magic, but it doesn't. Uh, permanent or limited item or unit. Uh, Minora's STMR is an, a double hand item. Uh, this one also has 200% fill rate. This one I, I do know about and I keep in mind sometimes. Uh, the thing is, I very rarely gear an actual DPS unit for 200% fill rate. Usually I'll either gear like the off form and then like brave shift during a during a non DPS turn and try to get crystals that way, like cheating cheating the form. And in that case. I'm using Mood Maker, again, out of habit. Uh, primary forms, I'm usually going to be preferring something like either Kefka or Sarah for higher magic or Pause SDMR for more double hand. I don't think I've ever geared a mage for fill rate plus damage at the same time. If a mage is that desperate for LB fill, I'll usually go the route of adding like an LB battery in the party, either for entrusting or something like um, Kresnik to AoE fill the party. So, I mean, this... In theory, could be great on a DPS that needs LB fill and you can't spare the support to, to make sure it happens externally. But um, I've just never used it. I do have it, but I've just never used it. Uh, Black Mage Arcs STMR, on the other hand, is pretty good because it's a hat with fill rate, 100% fill rate. Um, there's not many sources of high fill rate on the hat slot. I think this is the only one that's 100. I think all the rest are 50 or lower. So overall, it's a pretty high fill rate hat. That's all there is to say for it. I mean, it's, it's high magic. It's higher than Heinz STMR. It's lower than Neobasin's VV's STMR. Um, I do have VV's STMR, so if I'm going for just raw magic, I'm wearing VV's. If I'm going for resistances, I'm going with Heinz. Uh, but this for fill rate, I usually put this on support units. Again, for the fill rate. Like I try, I try to gear my support units for 1,000 fill rate and 12 auto limit per turn, assuming their LB is relevant. This is a really good way to fill that, because as I mentioned, the, the hat slot does not have a lot of options for fill rate. Uh, limited. Uh, Knightly Paragon Lawrence. This is an STMR, and this is, again, this is one of those newer STMRs that I'm just not in the habit of using. I do own it. I got it a few weeks ago. I finally got it. Um, I do know that I have it, but I usually forget about it. When I'm gearing for passive provoke evasion, it is really good for that. Uh, it's decent defense and spirit, and it gives 30% passive provoke and 20% evasion. So this is just a straight up, flat out better version of Moogle plushie. And you might see in some of my videos, and I'm, I'm, I'm not even talking about the budget videos. I'm talking about like my normal videos where I just don't care about STMR usage and I'll just use use whatever I want. Um, I still I'll still use Moogle plushie over this. Again, just completely out of habit and forgetting that I even own this. So this is a really good tanking, provoking evasion STMR that I just don't use because I forget about it. Uh, 30, 30 provoke and 20 evasion. So you can mix this with, um, if the unit can't dual wield, you can use Durandal, Commando's Captain Shield, and Moogle Plushie, and you're at um, 50 evasion and 100 passive provoke. That'd be wonderful on, like, Maeve, for example, who has 50 evasion naturally. So that'd be 100 evasion, 100 passive provoke, and, you know, most of her slots still left open. It's good on support units. I just forget about it. I just forget that I own it. Uh, limited Realms STMR is a fill rate rod. It's, you know, uh, like, this, I do use it sometimes, but... It does feel like to me, like almost always when I'm gearing a support unit for fill rate, my go-to is double rem dagger, which is just more fill rate because daggers can get the, uh, the, the, the item world passive of 150. So either rem dagger or zon dagger, and I've got a lot of zon daggers. I've pulled him so many times. I think I have four zon daggers now that I think about it. Um, yeah, it's, just, it's, it's more LB fill rate. And nearly every single... Um, support can use daggers, and the ones that can't use daggers, I'll usually give Pinello's, ST, or Pinello's TMR, and then I'll dual wheel daggers anyway, even if they can't use it naturally. They'll, I'll force them to dual wheel daggers, and they'll be using either double rims, or if they can't dual wheel naturally, they'll, they'll use like one rim and one zon to turn the dual wield on. Uh, so for that reason, even though it's 200%, because rods can't get fill rate on item world, I never ever use this, just because... 
you know, a dagger is 250%, which is better than 200%. So, yeah, I never use that. Uh, Dashing Gambler Setzer, it's technically the highest spirit card in the game. I think it's even higher than um, uh, Diverti's STMR. I think Diverti's STMR is like 164 or something. I think, by memory, I could be mistaken. But even so, the only reason you would ever use a spirit card is on Diverti himself. And, of course, Diverti needs to use his own STMR because it's his STMR. It activates his passive. So the one unit in the entire game that would actually consider wearing this um, doesn't want to wear it because he wants to wear his own STMR plus uh, a rod or something. I know he can't wear rods naturally, but if I'm, if I'm gearing Diverti for tanking, almost always I'm giving him, I'm forcing him to wear a rod because of equip rod because rods are just way better overall, way higher spirit. Um, this... Not, not so much. And it does have the RNG chance of Guts. 7% uh, chance. It can activate 7 times. But unlike Setzer, I am not a gambler. If I'm gearing for Guts, we're going 100%. We're not, we're not playing with a 7% chance. So, yeah. Never use that. Uh, Hess Sage Rowan, his STMR, is kind of amusing. I think it came out literally the same time that Last Wells Chronicle came out. And the only person that would ever really use a magical two-handed katana is Neovision's Lastwell. And why would you ever use this over Neovision's Lastwell's Chronicle weapon? So, big confusion here. This this should not have been... Either they shouldn't have released Lastwell's Chronicle at the same time because it completely eclipsed this. Or this should be just better for other units. Like, maybe it should be a two-handed... I mean, I guess it's, cause it's a katana because it's Rowan, but... Well, for whatever reason, um, you know, lore or not, it's just not good on anyone. Even though it does have Dragon Killer here, it's just literally no one is using Magical Katanas except for Neo Vision's Last Well, and he's always using his Chronicle Weapon if you're using a Katana at all. The only reason we would not use his Chronicle Weapon is if you're using a different weapon for a Rod in Peril or something. But um, in that case, you aren't using this either. Uh, limited. Trot's Estimar is... is Good. It's got wind resist on it. Uh, 50%. So we talked about Barbarish's STMR way back in the first video, where Barbarish's STMR is only going to be used if you need wind resist and on a mage. Well, if you need wind resist on a physical unit, you're going to be using probably either this or Folan's STMR. It doesn't give mana regen, but like, you know, whatever, blah. Uh, so it's 65 attack power and 50 wind resist. You know, if you need wind resist, here it is. If you don't need wind resist, We've got significantly better accessories all over the place. Um, we've got, like, uh, Tifa's, Neo Vision's Tifa is the best accessory in the game if you just need raw attack. Um, we've got RNs these days for attack and uh, HP. We've got Kurosame's for hybrid stats. There's just, just way better options for attack power. Um, but if you need Wind Resist, very, very good choice. Ziza SS Tmar, this is one of those unfortunate ones where... It would be absolutely amazing on lots and lots of tanks or even support units. The problem is it's a mace, and a lot of tanks can't wear maces. A lot of the ones that can wear maces really prefer using shields and, like, true double hand shields. Um, yeah, there's just not very many dual-wielding magical tanks in the game. Or I think Amelia is the only one who appreciates this. It actually is really good on Amelia. But um, the passive is 75% spirit true dual wield. So for Melia specifically, I think she does want one copy of this. She wants to dual wield this plus her own STMR, and that caps her in true dual wield. Uh, Maces do have a really good item world rare that gives 40% HP. Really nice on tanks. Uh, it's 180 spirit, which is really high. So I mean, this is this is really good to bulk up your units or your support units. There are some support units that can wear this. And I do wear it sometimes. I, I, I think I've worn this a few times on Louise and the base form for like Clash of Wills to bulk her up. So, you know, it's it's really good. It's just like, I wish it saw more use on the actual legitimate tanks of the game. Um, like uh, like Maeve or General Celeste or something like that. Like these units don't really use this because either they can't use it or they'd rather be using a shield plus true, du true double hand. So it's, you know, one of those that should be good, but just doesn't find a ton of use. Uh, Freezia's STMR, on the other hand, is really nice. It's a staff, one-handed staff, that gives true double hand, even with a shield, 50% spirit. 
So this is great for um, magical tanks or even support units because this does work with the shield. And Spirit True Double Hand, there, there's a few sources these days. Um, now that Coastal Freesia is out, uh, anyone can wear 200% Spirit Double Hand. Uh, so this is really good. Um, I do find that a lot of times when I'm gearing up a magical bulk tank, uh, for example, Maeve. Maeve is using her own STMR, which is just better. Uh, General Celeste is using her, her own STMR, which is just better. I don't really use Shoreline Fina and Daisy anymore. If I'm using Beatrix, she's using her own chronicled upgraded greatsword. That's better. So the problem is, like, all the magical cover tank, or Snow. Snow's a magical cover tank. Again, he's using his own STMR. He's not using a staff. So, like, every single magical tank that I would want to use this on is not using this because they've just got a better option or their own personal option, which is just superior to this. Uh, on support units, though, that need more bulk or just a plain old generic healer that is not dual wielding, this is a great option. So, you know, 164 spirit, pretty high. 50% true double hand, pretty decent. It gives them, it gives them light resist as well. So, like, it's a really good staff. It's just, like, <laughs> same as Zizat. I wish it saw more use than it really does because it, it's a, it's an item that should be good, should be in a lot of builds, but just isn't. Cindy is very nice. So this one, um, I feel like this one is kind of eclipsed pretty hard by Irving's STMR because if you remember back in the back in the previous video, Irving's STMR is 100% machine killer, also 100% beast killer, and 50% double hand. So this is losing all the Beast Killer and the Double Hand to gain 5% MP a turn. That is a tremendous, tremendous loss. Like, Irvine's blows this away so hard. That being said, you can stack this with Irvine's, which will probably see use in, like, Dark Visions, where you're gearing five different units. You know, the uh, Alexander and Bayman Esper are both spoken for. The unit has no natural machine killer. Maybe you've only got one copy of Eileen's STMR, one copy of Esther's STMR. Those are going on, you know, DPS numbers one and two. And DPS number four is stuck down here with, like, the leftovers. This could be really slot efficient to cap them out without any help from, like, the more commonly used machine killers. It is 100%. And even though it's got, like an absolutely just strictly better version out there on a different unit. It is still 100%. It will stack with that unit. So it, it, is, it is probably going to see use even though Irving's STMR does exist. Uh, Poppy's STMR, I love this. This not so much for a power reason, but I use this constantly all the time as a convenience unit. Anytime you ever see me using Biggs and Wedge, as, as long as the enemy does not absorb elements, Biggs and Wedge are using Poppy's Paintbrush or any of my support chainers that are there for support chaining and not for actual damage. They are going to be using Poppy's Paintbrush. It is a seven element weapon, everything except dark. So, you know, if you know the mechanics of chaining, multi element chains build faster. A chain with a, a chainer holding this plus a dark weapon in the offhand is all eight elements. The chain is literally at max modifier on the second hit if you're sparking. So basically, anytime you cap at all in that chain, you are always capping at the max modifier. Single element chains, you got to be kind of careful with timing. If you cap your chain too quickly, like for example, um, Neovision's Laura Croft, her LB hits very, very fast. If you cap it too quickly, you're losing a ton of damage. If your chainers are using Poppy's Paintbrush, they're both using that, you can cap that chain at any point. You're always at max modifier. Incredibly good for that reason. It also gives, on top of that, auto amp for water, wind, and light. So light we already had from Kuja's STMR. Wind we already had from Lex's STMR. These are older items. I think this is the only permanent, um, or the only universal water amplify for permanent water amp. Uh, there is also Water Amp on Milo's card, but A, you've got to use Milo's card, which isn't that good, and B, it's only for Brave Exodus units anyway. Uh, but this is usable on anybody. I think this is the only permanent, or the only universal Water Amp that's a permanent buff. So, you know, Poppy's STMR, really, really good. 
Um, I've only got one currently. I can't wait to off-banner more of her because I would love a second copy so my support chainers can always be using that. Also, just a quick mention, tag chainers love Poppy's ST Mar because tag chainers can never spark. And if you're not sparking, the, paint, the, the chain builds a lot slower. And again, Poppy's ST Mar fixes that problem. Just keep in mind bosses that absorb. If a boss absorbs any element whatsoever of that weapon, it absorbs the entire attack, so you can't chain at all. So bosses with absorbs, it's a big no-no. If the boss doesn't absorb, and assuming the boss doesn't have millions of resistance that you can't, you just can't hurt him, uh, Papa Yestimar are great for that. Call me Yestimar. I got it kind of recently. I've used it a few times. It's another source of mana reduction. It's also... Um, MP per turn and auto regen as a decent staff. Uh, the bigger, the biggest problem here for me is, like I like I mentioned earlier, my favorite combo is Rivera's STMR and Trans Terra's STMR. That gives me a nice, exact, even 80% mana reduction, which is the cap, not really any waste. Um, if I'm using, for example, uh, Trans Terra's STMR and Call Me as Time Waver, um, I'm, I'm only at 70% mana reduction. And to be fair, 70% mana reduction is overkill 9 out of 10 times. But if I'm gearing for mana reduction specifically, there's a reason for that, meaning probably mana drains, meaning I want as much as possible. So most of the time, I'm going Rivera's STMR, Trans Terra's STMR. But if you don't have those, Trans Terra's STMR is no longer in the pool, so newer players are absolutely not going to have that unless they will seed for it. Um, Call Me's Time Waver is a good option for mana reduction, and it's just an overall decent staff. I mean, 12% MP per turn is still pretty good for like you know mana recovery over time. So, not the best staff, but it certainly has use. Uh, Loyal Knight Steiner is STMR. His is a um, great sword. Uh, we talked about it earlier how uh, most or quite a few tanks can't really wear great swords. So a few of the tanks that would want to use this just, just can't. Um, those that can, I mean, it's fine. It's 180 attack power, which is really nice. Uh, the thing is that I find, you know, again, it really depends on your options. But for a player like myself that has quite a few options, um, if I'm using Maeve, Maeve's STMR is better than this. If I'm using Aphmaw, Aphmaw's STMR is basically the same thing. Um, if I'm using Snow, Snow's going to borrow Aphmaw's STMR. If I'm using Behemi... He's going to want either his own upgraded TMR Sawtooth, or he might want um, Aphmaw's STMR. Um, but this works for Behemi as well. It also gives a lot of resistances. Now, this could be the reason I would swap to this over some of those other options. If I needed more Ice and Lightning Resist plus Bulk, then this is obviously great. It is a great sword. Some tanks can't wear it. Some tanks can. Um, but yeah, so, you know, for the resistances... I'm going to pick this. For just generic, plain old bulk, I'm usually going with either Maeve's STMR, Aphmaw's STMR, or really just those two for physical bulk. Uh, and then for Steiner himself, he gets, he gets a passive, but I mean, we're not using Steiner for tanking, so who cares? Uh, Concha's STMR is... It's one I was excited, excited about getting. I was super happy to get this. Um, I did use it in one Clash of Wills where Laura Croft... Uh, I didn't use I didn't use Louise and Laura Croft used an instrument. I forgot what Clash of Wills that was. One of them was it Asta or Kairos? I don't know. In one of them, I used Bulwark and I used Instrument in Peril, and Laura Croft used this because it is the best instrument in the game for physical DPS. Uh, you know, it's got good variants. It's 1.5 variants. Uh, Bulwark can Instrument in Peril, and Bulwark is commonly used in Clash of Wills. So overall. I was really excited to get this. Um, other than that, like, one single time, I've never really used this. So it hasn't seen as much use as I would have expected. That's mostly Louise's fault, honestly, because Louise is just so good. And Louise comes all the time. And anyone that I would really want to be putting this on as, like, a forced equipment, I'm going to be giving them Black Sparky instead. So, like, Titus... Um, Louise, not Louise, Titus, uh, Laura Croft, Sky, like they're all going to use Black Sparky on a on a team with Louise on it, or I'm using something like Cacteria, and the double handers are going with Igon's Fist. 
So that's like the bigger problem here. It's not so much that Synchronic Keyboard is bad and Bulwark is bad. It's just that like Cacteria or Carton or Louise, they're giving us these weapon imperils that are just better and weapon types that are better. Like Black Sparky is so good because of all the passives it has. Not to mention Louise's gun imperil is 35% where a Bulwark's Instrument Imperil is only 30%. So even even if this had like more attack power on it, the Gun Imperil would still win, unfortunately. But for a fight where you're not bringing any of those options, but you are bringing Bulwark, Conscious STMR is going to be good for that. Uh, Daisy's STMR is an accessory for physical tanks. And it's actually good for magical tanks as well. It has no spirit on it, but we're going to talk about the Chronicle version. So the Chronicle version is the upgraded... Um, uh, actually, they both have the Shield Mastery. So Shield Mastery right here, when you're using any kind of a shield, it's 50% to all stats. So this could be good for a Magical Tank. Honestly, Magical Tanks, I'm usually using um, Aerith's STMR. Um, but if you don't have Aerith's STMR, this is a good source of percent spirit. Um, but, but most of the time, this is going on your Physical Tank. Because Physical Tank, it gives 60 defense or 65 after upgrades. It gives, um, I think this is magic mitigation. Yeah, it gives magic mitigation, which is kind of weird. Uh, it's 30%, same as auto shell, but doesn't give any uh, doesn't give any spirit buff. But this is real nice. So it also gives 50% defense. And as a side effect for your physical tank, it also gives 50% spirit. Which, you know, some a lot of fights use physical damage, but they also toss in a few random magical spells that if you're using a physical tank, you're not covering the magical spells. So it's hitting everybody. So again, more bulk for your tank. You could also toss this on your support units, and again, just, you know, 50% spirit or 50% defense. It's nice. It's very nice. If you have that, definitely use it. Uh, Noreen's STMR, you know, this is where it gets a little bit specialized. Um, it's a great sword. With the, it's a two-handed great sword, and it gives 50% um, killers to aqua and humans. Uh, the human killer is kind of whatever. Uh, you know, that's, that's such a common killer. No one really cares. Aqua killer is super-duper rare. So, Aqua Killer, if you're fighting an aquatic boss and you have a sword in, a great sword in peril from um, uh, Tyvis or Cloud or Noppy, there's actually a few great sword in perils at this point, three of them, yeah. So, if you're using any of those units with a great sword in peril and you're fighting an aquatic, this could be really good. Um, that's a really specialized situation, or it could be good against a human. You know, maybe the unit has trouble gearing for killers. And it is 182 attack power. It's like, it's, it's decent attack power. So this is an overall good great sword. It's just, you know, human killer is, is very, very easy. Aqua killer is very rare, but that also means it rarely shows up. So it's rarely relevant. And it does need a great sword in peril to really, you know, get the most out of it. Not to mention, it is a great sword. And, you know, again, the problem, we don't have the variance patch. You never want to use a great sword if you don't have to. There's a better option with like guns or fist or whatever. Avalanche Jesse's STMR is very, very weird. I'll show you why. So Avalanche Jesse has 100% passive provoke. 50% here passive provoke. And where's your other one? And 50% passive provoke. So Jesse has 100% passive provoke at all times at five star level one. You can literally never, ever turn off her passive provoke 100% no matter what. Even if you don't level her up, she still has 100 passive provoke. This STMR is, someone was on drugs this day. The passive effect is only for Jesse and it gives 30% more passive provoke. What is the point of that? That makes no sense. That makes no sense. It's completely wasted on her. It also gives physical evasion only for Jesse. That does work. She does need more evasion to cap herself. I guess technically it works on Biggs and Wedge too. Maybe that's why you care. I mean, they're not really a provoke tank, but I guess you do you. Anyway, the main reason to use this is 20 resist all. So 20 resist all, very, very nice. Basically the same thing as Kryla's STMR. Kryla's STMR is a lot better um, because it gives 20 resist all plus better stats. Uh, this is only 20 resist all on pretty low stats. It does give 30 attack power, so this could be useful on a physical unit, I guess, that needed needed resist all. There's probably way better ways to get phys get magical resist or get uh, elemental resist on a physical unit. I've I I've never resorted to this, but it is an option. And it is a 20 resist all, and if you don't have like, you know, multiple copies of Kryla's STMR, or if you don't have that at all, 
it's a, it's a good it's a good hat. You know, resist all. Very very nice. I do use this pretty often. Um, Avalanche Bigs and Wedge. Let's go ahead and check them out. Uh, theirs is similar to Zizat. It's like a dual wield gun with 75% spirit. What's well, a gun? So once again, we're dual wielding with spirit true dual wield on a gun. So while not many tanks can wear maces, even less of them can wear guns. So this is just a weird weapon. It's decent on supports that can dual wield, just like um, I mentioned, like Louise wears this sometimes when I need to bulk her up on the base form. Uh, you can stick this on. There are a couple supports that can use guns. You can always use the equip gun on a support and wear two of these and get 150% true dual wield for spirit. That's a really high bulk for a support unit that has none naturally. I've got, um, this was, the, the Biggs and Wedge were on the Sephiroth banner that I went really deep on. So I got like 10 Biggs and Wedge. I got two of these STMRs. I've used it a few times, a couple times, not very often though. Um, so it's like low impact. I, I wouldn't like, you know, STM, I wouldn't Moogle for it or anything, but uh, it's like, okay. Oh, we're almost to the top. Uh, Moogle of Narshi Mog. Now he gives a decent spear. Um, now this is a good variant spear. Um, good being relative. It's only 1.3, which is still in the bad, the bad category of variance weapons. But it's better than other spears. Most spears are 1.25, which is even worse than this. So this is one of the only spears in the game that has good variance before the fix. But even then, good being relative to other spears. It's still bad compared to like guns or um, fist and all. Uh, anyway, it's a 170 attack power spear with bird killer and stone killer. So, you know, if you're using a spear um, that is fighting a bird or a stone, I guess this is okay. Uh, no jump damage, and really Dragoons are the only ones that for the most part use double-handed spears. Uh, so no jump damage. Like, every dra Dragoon ever is going to be using Kane's Chronicle in a few weeks. So even, even though it does have killers, I'd rather get these killers in other slots and use like a better spear. But until the variance patch... It is, technically speaking, the strongest spear in the game just because it has higher variance than all the others. So that's something. Uh, Yeti of Narshi Umaro's STMR. Uh, guts and resistance. And um, it gives counterattack that also works for magical. And it's unlimited. So this would be something you... It's also got attack power. So like if you need attack power and death, um, the better option is Kurosame's STMR, the Neovision's Kurosame. Uh, if you don't have that, this is the second best um, option. We don't really have many fights in the game that need death immunity on your physical DPS. We had some in the past, like uh, the series boss battle against X-Death. You know, you had to always gear your DPS and death immunity for phase one. Um, but any modern fights don't really use death immunity. Any future fights that I'm aware of from JP don't use death immunity on the DPS. The, the tanks need it, the provokers need it, but the DPS never need it. So death immunity has really fallen out of favor for DPS units. It's not been relevant in a very long time. It's not going to be relevant for a very long time. Um, but it does have this counterattack thing. Now, this can be really good on something like, for example, um, what's his name? Kresnik, to give him sources of LB fill. There are other counterattack methods in the game, like Black Belt. Black Belt's only, I think, 30% to physical only. Um, stuff like that. So this one can work on magic as well. Keep in mind, if you fully resist a magic attack, you will not counter it. So if you're using full immunity to spells, um, they won't be triggering counters. You have to take a little bit of damage to counter a magic attack. You can counter physical attacks, even if you evade them. But again, if you immune them through elemental resist, you will not, you will not counter it. You have to either evade it or take a little bit of damage from it. But it can be good for, um, like I said, someone like Kresnik, or uh, uh, Behemi has, not Behemi, um, what's that unit? Um, uh, Runda, Runda, the, the little robot in season four, we're getting him pretty soon on global. He counterattacks with, counter with AoE Mana Restore, so that'd be great for the party. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot, a, lot, a lot, this is probably the best way to give your party counterattacks, or give the unit counterattacks. Uh, Cleom's STMR, I mentioned this during the Axtar um, discussion. Uh, her STMR is a two-handed katana with killers on it. So it's got Machine and a Reaper Killer. Machine Killer is pretty common, not really that big of a deal. But Reaper Killer is sort of rarish. So this is a... Um, it's 
you know, other than the killers, it's worse than Divine, Axstar's STMR. It's definitely worse than the Neo Visions, Cleo Stars STMR. But um, you know, if you're fighting your Reaper, maybe it's like your third your third DPS unit or something. You've got like Sephiroth or Orin on the team for Katana and Peril. This could be good on like Titus or something. It suffers the same problem as all Katanas, that you know it's bad variants until the fix. But after the fix, like if Titus is on the party, along with Sephiroth or Orin, and you know you need Machine or Undead Killer, could be a good option, maybe potentially. Uh, Cleo at Cleo Stars STMR is a lot better though. And then finally, the last permanent five star added to the game, and the last one ever because there's none in the future. Um, Braska. So Braska's STMR is a spirit and magic hybrid staff with some resistances, um, some Evo magic, and an auto cast um, Esper Gauge by two every single turn. So overall, pretty good. It's an upgraded version of Summer Folk's TMR, the Summer Parasol. It's a better version. It gets Evo Magic. Um, I mentioned this during Citra, um, where her her staff is just not seeing a ton of use. The problem is, like I said, most Evokers have their weapons already spoken for. Ferris and Terra are using their Sword Chronicles. Um, Luna Frey is using her Chronicle. Yuna is using her Chronicle. So there's no Evokers that are just like missing a weapon. Every single one uses a weapon already. I'm not sure about Lena, the new, the brand new Lena. She might. She might like this weapon. I don't actually know. I've never, I've never mapped it out. This might be good for for a summoner Lena. I don't know. And maybe summoner Redia coming later could be good for them. I don't know. Check the math. But if I got this, I would almost always only use it because of the Evil Gates two per turn, which is pretty nice. That's pretty nice. You know, I usually use Bayonet Synergy because it's a materia. And it's easy to put on support units because support units don't really care about their materials most for the most part. But this could be good as well. It's, an, it's another slot. Um, so yeah. So that is the end of the permanent five star unit STMRs. I've gone over all of them. Um, later this week, I'll probably go over the Neovision base STMRs, and then potentially if there's you know um, any desire for it, uh, I can go for. Discussing the limited time STMR. There's a lot of them. Um, actually, there's not a ton. Actually, that's, that, 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 that's not all of them. There's definitely more time limited collaboration. Yeah, there, there's a bunch, and apparently the wiki is not sorting them into one nice even category. But we can go through all of these, maybe. The reason I'm not sure that's really worth it, because like all of these, either you have them or you don't. So telling you, like for example, like let's just pick one that's okay ish. Um, like Ellie. Ellie's STMR is amazing. Um, and if I tell you, oh, this is a great STMR, like, if you don't have her, well, you don't have her. There's nothing really you can do about it. So there's not a ton of value to rating no longer available limited units. But maybe if I get bored one day, I'll do it anyway. Just for the just for the for the sake of doing it. We'll see. In any case, hopefully this has been helpful. This has been a ton of talking, about three and a half hours all combined. Um, yeah, there are all our permanent five-star STMRs discussed and commented on. See you next time.